Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to this sort of really casual walkthrough guide of Top. This is going to be a bit different than the usual guides that I usually do, because this is the first, well, it's like the second time I've been doing this thing sort of um, live, I suppose, or streaming, or whatever, whatever it is the kids are doing nowadays. And I'm not really going to go over the mechanics of the fight, but this, because there are already, like, there are already great, like, YouTubers that have already done the guides, and you can find them everywhere else, but what I'm going to be focusing on is sort of what I see in the fight, um, how I work out the mechanics in my brain, and stuff to look out for um, that might not be available in, like, the other guides. Like, I'm sort of incredibly happy that the community has, like, stepped up since I started making guides, like, a long time ago, that everybody's been doing really great, and I've actually learned a lot from them, but what I wanted to do was differentiate. Like, I'm not gonna, like, verbatim go over all the mechanics, because, quite honestly, I, I don't understand some of them. Um, I'm, my main is a dancer, and I do dance things, and, uh, I'm just not that familiar with, like, the tanks and the healers, but I'll try to cover a little bit of, of what they do as well, um, throughout this entire fight. That being said, uh, I'm just going to focus on sort of what I see and, and how my mind works and, and how my ra and, you know, my raid team really helped me out with getting my mind like wrapped around the, the mechanics. And um, for the most part, this fight is it was the most difficult uh, to do, but it wasn't so much the mechanics. It was you had to learn every single iteration of the mechanics throughout the fight in order to understand how to do like your particular job better and more correctly. And I think that's the main difficulty is that everybody has to know everything. And that's what takes like, you know, the most time. So without further ado, like, let's get started. I probably missed a couple of other things that I wanted to say, but uh, we'll, we'll revisit when we revisit. And hopefully all this stuff and of course, uh, I just stopped myself recording uh, by hitting the space bar. So yeah, this is how we're gonna go. This is this. Hopefully, you'll be entertained. But it, at the end of the day, you'll learn a little bit of like things to see, like things to look out for, um, that will help you with the ways that you already understand the current mechanics that you might be progressing through, or that you ha you know you've already cleared the fight, but there might be something that's a little bit. I forget the word, but something that's a little bit more, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll sort of get the idea, but let's, let's, I'm long-winded, this will be long-winded, it'll probably be like four hours of me talking, but, uh, hopefully you'll be entertained and, uh, learn something out of it. So, uh, we set up our marker positions like this, uh, yeah, so our marker positions are standard, you'll have the usual, like, team, like, clock positions, and we'll, I'll go over all that as we, as we sort of start along. Here's sort of our pull and also too like I'm since I'm a dancer I have a dancer focused brain and I'm going to be talking about the mechanics as a ranged DPS w with that perspective so and there you go uh here I actually do a different opener than the standard opener I I do tech step and it seems to work for all of it I I think throughout the entire fight you're going to have to adjust or make like ever so slight adjustments to your openers to your cooldowns to your um, just, just all the different things that, that really happen in this fight. Obviously, Towers and Tether is the first mechanic. You've seen this a thousand times. And in fact, you will see this a thousand times because, uh, this is uh, one of the hardest mechanics. Um, not necessarily the hardest mechanic, but it is, it always gets everybody. Like, even though we, like, our raid group has cleared four times and mo many of our friends have already cleared, it still gets us. It still, it still kills us. Um, luckily they put it at the very beginning. The way that I sort of think about this, right? And let me get out a let me get out a silly pen here. The first thing we do is we have two groups. We have one up here and one one at the north and one at the south. The tanks and healers go north. The deep all the DPS go south. And what that does is it allows us to understand who's flexing to the north and who's flexing to the south. For my particular instance, if like I was given the task to always flex, so if I had the same number as uh, as one of the other DPS, then I would always flex to the tank side. And then, uh, vice versa, you know, a healer or a tank would always flex to the, um, to the south side. And what this does is that, uh, and you'll, you'll have to figure out, like, flex conditions for your party and your group. Pretty much, I, it's, it's difficult for me, so I think they're probably like, you know, you're always gonna flex, like, you get the easy flex, but, um, but some other ones like right here, like right, like Pally and Brave, like who's the DPS that that needs to flex 
if there are conditionals and you know this is this is how the entire fight goes it's all conditionals but essentially what you do is you get uh you get one through four up in the north and then you get one through four you get one through four at the south now the first thing that i'm thinking at is like as soon as the as soon as the numbers come out i'm like okay do i need to flex and it's like okay if i don't need to flex okay great now sometimes I'll get number three, um, and number threes are the first ones to pick up the tethers, or at least the the tether order pickup, which you probably already know, is three, four, one, two, um, and then the towers are uh, straightforward. You know, ones get the first tower, twos get the second towers, three and four, and so on. So the first thing I'm looking at, right, because I'm number four, I'm the one that's going to pick up the seventh, second tether. So I'm actually thinking about um, where I'm going to go right now. And the way that we have it right is that there are there are a couple of different configurations for the towers, right? The towers can spawn either as they are right now at sort of a 90 degrees. So um, the way that we have the priority system is that Whoever is whoever is the group that is on the tower starting from north and south, that group has priority on their tower. And then the north group up here in this particular case, um, they don't have a tower that spawns on their on their spot. So they're going to move to the tower uh, that's that's right here. Likewise, if a tower spawned over here and the south tower spawned uh, where it is right now, the the party, the, the north group party would always go would go and flex to this to this tower. Now in the case of where we have uh, towers that spawn opposite each other, we chose clockwise to rotate. So the this party, the north party rotates clockwise and the south party rotates clockwise. And then those towers are our new uh, sort of starting positions. In this case, our starting positions are sort of here. And now the idea is that since I'm number four and this is my south tower, my tether responsibility is this guy right here. Because the tether responsibility of this tower is this guy right here. And let's see, if I back up here, if the towers were were this and it was clockwise and and it was uh, opposite each other, right? Like the, the so the, so if the DPS rotated clockwise, and then the tanks and healers rotated clockwise, then a DPS, whoever is responsibility is getting the tether, is going to come back down here um, to take the uh, to take their tether, and then the DPS party is here. Likewise, uh, the tanks over here, tanks and healers, will go back up north. You take your tether to the spot that is empty, or you can think of it as back to the spot that you were just in that uh, you now had to move out of. I feel like I'm doing John fucking Madden right here, so it's it's quite hilarious. But uh, but here we go. Let's let's continue. All right. So at this point, I'm looking at my tether on the right. Towers go off. Everything goes off. Get my tether, and then I pull. And then I pull my tether back to the empty spot of where I was in the DPS. And same likewise for uh, the tanks over here. Remember from before the towers. There there was a tower over here, and this was the last set of towers. And and uh, our tank pulls it here to the empty space, and the towers go here to the empty space. And that's sort of like the rule. Is like. You know, where your tower was, like, after it exploded, take your tether back to there. Now, there are a couple of different uh, tower configurations where it, these rules don't apply, and we'll just keep on going through and seeing this. So, okay, so we have a tether that spawns at the south, and then a tether that spawns at the north. Now, the, the what how we do this is that whatever party is on a tower when it spawns, that party has priority on that tower to get it. And in this case, you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of folks. You'll see me just stand right here, I think. And then you'll see a lot of folks uh, over here on the B side will also come down to the south. Yeah, so they get the tethers. I stay here. Now, now what's interesting is that the folks that were over here that had their previous tower, right, they rotated... And then the, the tether folks rotated um, or are going back out to their empty tower. So it's sort of the same principle. So here I'm just kind of chilling out, you know, I'm, I'm waiting, letting everything happen. And then here, here it gets a little bit weird because the towers don't really spawn like north, south, east, west. They spawn sort of like off kilter. And the other important thing is that you have to look at your partner as well. Whoever has your number part, whoever has the same number as you, you have to look at them because sometimes 
Like for instance, if my partner was Vey over here, so let's pretend that if, if Vey was my partner, right? Which obviously in this configuration it wouldn't be, but he's there and we can see him. So if Vey is my partner and the tower and the tower spawns here, like I know that he doesn't have like, it doesn't make sense for him to run all the way over here, even though this tower might be my priority. So essentially what we'll do or what I'll do is that uh, I look at my tether partner, pretending it's Vey, and then I'll go to the opposite tower. Here's the thing is like uh, I was saying earlier that the that the towers don't spawn like directly north south. They spawn sort of off ki off kilter. You can see like if we draw a line through like uh, this tower is a bit south. This tower is a bit north. And so what can trick people up is that if a tower spawns here uh, south, this tower might be like a, a juicy target to go to because it's way closer and you don't have to move a lot. But if, if somehow your tether partner, which in my case, this is Venom up here, um, I know that he'll, I'll know that he, he wants to move this way because he's, because he's the tank and he wants to stay most north. And this, and this tower right here is a little bit more north. So it's a shorter distance to get back to the, uh, to north in order to tank the boss. I know to go over here. But the idea is to have sort of like these these sort of rule settings in order to um, in order to be able to flex. Um, and we use like voice call outs to make sure that everything like sort of happens uh, smoothly. Like, for instance, um, if we if we back up here and let me see if I could get like some like a different configuration here. What am I doing here? I'm being I'm being silly. Um, <laughs> So here I probably did a call out of being like, hey, I'm taking the tether to D or, you know, and my partner is like taking it over to B. Um, and uh, your partner is always going to do you're always going to do the same thing with your partner, right? Like if your part, if your number partner is getting if the threes are getting tethers, your partner is getting a tether essentially. But uh, let's see sort of the thought process here, right? So it's. So this one right here, right? We have two towers. We have uh, the two towers that explode. We have uh, two towers that explode, right? So in this case, like party, this the, this is the south party. This is the north party, right? And we've already flexed um, this part in this configuration. If the towers spawn like this, this party gets the closest one, and then this party gets the closest one. But you have to look at like the entire configurations to figure out like which team is getting what. So you have to look at the teams, your partner. Um, the tethers, uh, where the towers spawn, and that's what makes this mechanic like really complicated is because it's simple on the outside, but but paying attention to sort of all of those little nuances will will help you gauge on which tower to get and which tether to get. And and once everybody sort of understands that in the rules, this phase becomes easier, not necessarily clean, but uh, it becomes uh, a lot easier and you and you can do like sort of less call outs like like for instance on this one right like we we don't have to we, like i know that whoever is over here getting their tether like i don't even i don't even need to look at their their debuff number like they're getting they're getting the north tether i know that whoever is here is getting is getting this tether um and you can plan sort of plan where to move based on all these different tower configurations so yeah, pick up the tethers. Uh, one of the things with like tether movements, um, in fact, let me here back up, uh, back up a few. One of the things that uh, happens with tether movements is uh, I sort of pick up the tether, run underneath the boss, uh, do a little circle, and then move out uh, because you don't want to grab your tether and like pull it all the way out to the outside first. So you see, you run in. I sort of wait a little bit here. And then I do like a little loop de swoop and run out. And what I'm what I'm doing, uh, what I'm doing is making sure that um, making sure that that there's there's no like my space is right here to take that tether. I just want to make sure that you know nobody is here. I'm not gonna run out and like clip. Like if somebody were here, I, I'm gonna have to let them run around first before I take my tether out. Like the people who don't have tether need to like go away. And so I'm looking for those folks uh, out here just to make sure that I'm not like gonna accidentally pass the tether. 
One of the other things, like if you're number three, and let me see if I let me see if I actually have a number three. You can zoom in your camera uh, underneath the boss, and the boss will disappear um, because it, it's just the way that the the game works. Um, and you'll be able to see the tethers uh, much easier because uh, Beetle Boy here is uh, pretty big. If you have number three, um, one of the things is is that the uh, so if you're in the north and south group, right, like we talked before, the tethers uh, will spawn on random people. So if everyone is at the south and everyone is at the north, then the people that are picking up the tether just stand north and south, um, just in this case. Come on. So if we play it, you see you see how like two tethers spawn north and I sort of do a little loop de swooped around the center of the boss. And then um, I kind of look at my partner and we just kind of go to our like blank spaces um, so that that's a that's a thing to kind of you know figure out and like understand and in this case with the towers opposite each other like depending on where the other tower spawns so we got lucky like so the tower spawned like where they were um, and in this case if the tower spawn where they were then uh, the people who are picking up the tethers will go back to the the last tether spot so it makes sort of like logical sense I've already spent 20 minutes on the first mechanic. This is gonna, this is going great. <laughs> You're gonna be here for like 10 hours. I'm sorry. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe, right? That's what all the YouTube kids are saying. But I think you, I think you guys have an understanding, or at least that's that in my mind. That's how it, that's how I figure it out. Is like I pay attention to the towers. I pay attention to uh, my teammates. I pay attention to. Um, not necessarily the empty spaces, but like which empty space to go to. And um, and also voice communication like really helps out. Like I'm grabbing Pally's tether or I'm grabbing Amon's tether. Um, and then that way your partner can be like, okay, I'm, well, I'm now I know that my partner is grabbing this tether. I can grab that tether and go to that empty spot. And uh, it just makes it all, it just, it just makes it all fluid and, and fast. And, Hopefully I can explain sort of how my mind works a little bit quicker in this next mechanic with a Panto Crater. So we do the same thing. We have a we have a north group and a south group and we flex. Um, at this point, these these positionings, even though they're even though it's a bit wild, what we do is we heavily heavily mitigate for the first two uh, for the first two like sort of cycles. And then for the last two cycles, sort of everybody uses their like personals. Um, but it, it really is a it really is a, a testament to the healers on you know keeping everybody alive at this point. So yeah, we have pizza slices, and then we have um, then we have the biscuits, uh, AOEs, uh, which are the round AOEs. You'll see uh, you'll see next. The thing that I sort of do first is learn how to hit shortcut keys on my keyboard, and then w what I do first, or what sort of everyone does first, is that. We'll have a group that starts on the south, which is the DPS, and then a group that starts on the north, which is the tanks and healers. Um, same flex priority uh, as the first phase, doing tethers and towers, which you could also say uh, that if you establish a flex positions with tethers and towers and then do that sort of, you're practicing for this phase as well, um, which is totally cool. So we have, we have folks that start here and start up north, um, and what we do is, um, Whatever the empty space is, uh, that's where the party kind of goes to. If the pizza slices are like north and south, uh, sort of the same rule applies. Uh, the party rotates uh, clockwise into their into the empty space. And once you're in the empty space, my mind kind of uh, the way that my mind thinks is I'm like, okay, like here's here here's like new north. For, for me, right? Because these these uh, pizzas can these pizza AOEs can spawn in sort of any position, but they will always spawn opposite each other. So I'm like, okay, like I'm I'm in the south group. I stand like right about here, and then um, I've seen groups where you have like the party up front or the party in the back. Um, we do party up front and then uh, a person at the back. So let me just uh, let me just hop through this and sort of uh, live explain. Sort of my thought process. So I get here. I, f I first see the rotation. Um, the the rotation after the first uh, after the first thing is going counterclockwise. And then uh, and then the thing that I do on this first pizza slice AOE 
is um, if I'm number one, I sort of back out and 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 take it and and just sort of like go back out to the outer ring. I, I sort of go right here. Like if I'm here, I go right here, and this is sort of like the one position. But if I'm number three, the thing that I'm looking at to get to is is this spot right here, um, the intersection of the AOE and the boss's hit ring. Um, if the boss is in the middle. And this is the this is the starting spot that I always like lock into my you know lock in and look at um, as we're going. I'll play this. Oh boy, oh boy, we're lost. We're lost. Okay, here we go. So I look over there. I, I see my spot. I go right to my spot, and then and then the AOEs continue. And then the the thing that thing that helps me here is I let the AoEs dictate my movement from now on, and I stay within the uh, the boss's hit ring. So then we all we all start together. There's the first beam. So these beams are uh, th these are the also the things that I count to. It's like the beams are number one. So first beam, AoE, and then the person who has the number two will veer off and and go away. Um, because they have like an explodey thing on them. So you'll see number two back away, so they, they went back. And this camera angle too, like really helps me out, like really high and top down so I can get the positioning. But uh, essentially you want to stay in the tracks of these, of, of the boss's hitbox. And uh, so that's number two, and then you'll see me, this is number three, I veer off. And, and here's the thing that um, really got me and sort of, it took, it took a lot of runs to understand the timing on how to get out of that and then get back to the group one of the things that i said earlier was like let the dictate let the aoe's dictate your movement but once you hit like back here and the and the group is up here here let me bring up the uh let me bring up the pen we'll, ch we'll choose red which we'll is red color because i died to i died a lot and i really screwed up <laughs> other people too so here's the group, and 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 the group, whoever needs to go, like moves out this way. Um, obviously, it's in order. Like one ones are out of the group, and then twos, threes, and fours are will all go. Um, and of course, like on the other side, it's the, it's exactly the same. So we'll we'll just pay attention to one side, and then you'll 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 get it. But but as number three, um, <clears throat> um, as number three, hello, hello, why is it not drawing? Hold on, technical difficulties. So essentially, when um, oh there it is, no, oh, so weird. Maybe my computer's on the fritz. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's misbehaving. All right, there we go. Um, so here's the thing that really like I needed to help uh, or really helped me is that once once I was sort of like right here, I needed to get back to the group as fast as I could. So either a dash or, you know, a lot of people pop sprint here. Um, that's because the AOEs that you are setting down as well could screw over the next person that has to go over. Uh, and if that person gets screwed over, then it's like a domino effect. Oh, I have a phone call. I'll be right back. Hey, I'm back. Uh, it's good old, good old dad checking up on me watching the hockey game. So there we go. Um, where were we? We were somewhere here in the middle of, uh, this thing and whatnot. Panto Crater? Pancake Crater? Whatever? Yeah, and, and so at this point, we want to just move back to the party as, as quick as we can because the AoEs that are happening on you, like, can, like, screw over the next person that's coming, um, this way. Uh, also, a, it'll, it'll take, it'll take a little bit, but some things that I like to do is pay attention to my gauges and, and the boss's uh, health, not necessarily at this point, but just to just to continually build up a little bit of gauge. Not not right now, but when the boss hits about 10%. Um, so those are the things that I'm also thinking. But here, let's uh, let's continue to go and and play this, and hopefully everything will be copacetic, as one of my uh, friends would say. So there we go, and and at this point too, like all these AOEs and everything going off, you just have to run through the AOEs. Um, you're going, you're going to have to run through the AOEs. It's okay. There's plenty of time to get through. So yeah, just don't don't be afraid. Like really be uh, sort of aggressive um, with this with this part, and just get back to uh, what you need to. Now you did see me stop uh, like here for a fraction of a second because. 
Um, what at this point, what I'm looking for? Uh, well, not at this point. Here, let's back up even even uh, further than that. But here's the thing that I'm looking for. Whoop! Come on, come on, game. Work with me here. So here's the things that I'm looking for. First, do I need to flex? Uh, no, I do not need to flex. Get into my sort of position. Look at the rotation. There's the rotation. I see my little spot. I go to my spot, and then I let the AOEs dictate the movement. First beam out, seconds go. Then we have the second beam that comes out, number threes go. And this is the point where it's like, beam comes out, wait one AOE, and then go. And then at this point, I have to wait one more. And then here, I freeze for a, a split second, like right there, because I want to not get hit by the beam that's coming out and hitting the party right over here. Because what does happen is you can run too fast or too slow. Uh, and this is sort of like the Goldilocks like movement. Um, but if I were to re if I were to continue running, I might have gotten hit with that beam, and that would be a bad uh, that would be a bad day. Um, but we do get through, and there's a whole bunch of AOEs. Now you can see, you can see like if you don't move fast enough, like the AOEs that it spawn underneath you as you're running underneath underneath the boss, like those can screw over the people before you. After the fourth one, after that fourth beam. And after the pizza slices go away, um, this is the part where we actually have set positions. Um, both the tanks will be at A. Um, in fact, they're they uh, they who has the, and once they once the tanks get at A, they'll pop their invulns. And the timing for popping their invulns is actually this um, is actually the sound effect, the woom 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 uh, that hits four times, and then he pops it, and then it just all works out. Um, but the two tanks, they take both tank busters, so that way there's enough space for um, for the rest of us uh, in the party to just have uh, set positions. Um, and it sort of works itself out, and that's the strategy we use. So we don't ever have to like flex depending on if we have the marker on our heads or not. We just go to our spot, and we continue to DPS. And at this point, you can see the health of the boss. Well, maybe, the, maybe you can't see it, but it says 9% right now. And uh, if you get this boss to around 10% when the first beam comes out, you're in a good spot to push this phase a bit correctly. The boss is super dying right here because we're, we're like 3% ahead. But 10%, you're totally cool. And at this point, when all the beams and all the stuff is coming out, that's when you want to build your gauges. That's when you want to build your procs. Um, so you want to save up for the next phase. And, uh, and also too, like this mechanic, the tanks have to be the furthest out to take these two tank buster beams. Um, the rest of the party just stands like on, in, in the inner circle, as you can see here. Um, you'll figure it out eventually, like when you get to this phase. So, um, everybody takes a hit, everybody sort of comes back to the middle. And, and this is, this is really important for this entire fight, uh, is that, if you push this phase early, then the next phase will be really difficult, and then the phase after that. And so it's a snowball effect. And so you always want to push these phases uh, sort of at the correct timings. And and the correct timing for this phase is when he's about halfway uh, on his cast bar, or during his cast bar, that's when you um, uh, push, the, push the thing, push the timings. Now, one of the things that I do as a dancer is um, I preload tech step about... Uh, in about like 2% here. Let me switch over to um, sort of other videos. Yeah, so I preload tech step um, when the boss has about 2% left on his health um, because it, it, tech step just takes a long time. So I'll tech step here, right? And, and sort of what I'm doing is I'm prepping for the next phase, right? So all of this stuff is like prepping for the next phase. You have a whole bunch of gauge, you have a whole bunch of procs. And the reason I do a tech step here is because once I pop it, uh, that's when everybody else's burst comes up for the twins that are coming up, as well as both twins are targetable before their cast bar ends in the next in the next phase. So you can use your AOE hits to do more damage on both of them. And um, and yeah, see you want and you want to push like in the middle of atomic ray. That's the perfect push uh, like of that phase, and you know easy to hit. So pop tech hit hit a whole bunch of you know everybody blows all of their cooldowns to hit both of these bosses at the same time before their cast finishes and then they're 
when their cast finishes, they put the debuff on you. That's basically like, you can only hit one of them. So it's like four and four. So essentially, if we rotate it, if we kind of step back a little bit, these, with exceptions to the tanks, because they have to run through the boss and underneath to get into their positions. But essentially, you can see that I, I don't move. Um, the 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 tanks and the melees will will be the ones who actually move to their spots. But for me, I don't move because I'm hitting the mail. Um, some other folks might not have to move, but we sort of set up a little bit of our positions here to help us into the that to help into the next phase. I mean, you can move. You can see some folks moving around, but like Brave and I, um, who's uh, my my caster partner, we're we're like just standing here. And we're we're just we're just DPS turrets at this time, so we really don't have to think. We could just focus on our openers, and and do it that way. There is a there is a tank buster after, after well, there's two tank busters. Tanks need to be a little bit separated. There they are. Everything hits hard. Uh, I don't know the the mitigation cooldowns. Essentially, just remember for this entire fight, you're gonna have to use everything. Like if, if something is is it's everything has to be used. Every single cooldown. Um, in a way. Oh, and, and you know, another thing to do uh, when I step back, because the healing through uh, Panto Crater is uh, is pretty brutal. Um, so you can see we, uh, so we mitigate and we're really healthy. Uh, we have a whole bunch of shields and everything for the first two, but then everything kind of falls off. So the healers, um, I really don't know what they do, but they do a really good job of keeping everyone and the party alive because you see after that third hit like everybody's health like just goes to almost zero and then um i think we have an astro so he uses macro a lot and he and and that that's sort of his thing but but essentially uh there's just a lot of healing in between uh that stuff that needs to happen and uh it work with your healer to figure out like what what works best all i'll all i can say is that i probably can't do healing if I do, I would have to be like super focused, super concentrated, super like you can't even like you can't even like bother me. You can't even talk jokes uh, in raid, which is um, why I raid because we always tell fucking jokes. It's great. Debuffs come on. We we know which boss we're hitting. Tanks will have to use a lot of stuff for their cooldowns. They hit hard. Um, and at this point, we're just uh, we're just DPSing at the moment. Um, now here is the next mechanic that it really is probably the hardest mechanic in the entire fight, and luckily it was put uh, right after the uh, right after the first two like phase mechanics, which are also equally as difficult. You see right here before before they disappear, um, we have the DPS lineup like this, right? One, two, three, four, right? And then we have the DPS lineup right here: one, two, three, four. Or uh, not the DBS, the uh, the tanks and healers. So let's pretend that uh, the PlayStation comes out, right? So the X square, um, X square triangle. And I don't know if you know from before, but I have a little cheat sheet right here. So this is the order that we use the, um, the X square triangle and circle, and I count it from left to right. So X is one, square is that, triangle is that, blah 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 blah. This is this. In a perfect world, like let's say that I was X. Right, Pally was square. Uh, Brave got well. Actually, the, well, I think Smalls over here is. I think he's third, and then Brave. Brave has circle, right? Like, if we were to line up actually correctly, oh, let's just do this. That's that's a circle. That's a triangle. All right, there. There's my chicken scratch. Um, and then X, you know, X square um, triangle uh, circle. Yes, please forgive my drawing abilities. And if the and and what happens is that a, a giant the giant eye appears like outside the stage like it, it would appear let's say it appears like sort of here but on for example it it, it can appear anywhere but f just for this example let's say it appeared um, at D right um, the X the X would go here square triangle we would all line up and sort of this you know we would all go to our our spots like this and of course because it's savage um, anyone can get anything and you're tethered to a partner of course it's all gonna be like wishy-washy but 
but uh, I guess it's just here's how I work on it work out it in my brain is that you're gonna have to find you're gonna have to sort out flex positions like before and um, I, I, it's the same principle like what I look for is that if any one of my DPS friends has the same marker as me uh, I always flex to the um, to the other side oh and this is what I was gonna say right like if we drove if we if we had a line down the middle and then the eye appeared here um, then then the tanks and healers are always going to the the quote-unquote left side if you're looking at the eye right and the uh, the DPS are always going to the right side if they're looking at the eye this is the left group and then this is the uh, right group. So that sorts out which side you need to go for if you're not flexing. But if you're flexing, then um, then that's when you need to, like, obviously go to the other side, right? And then if we go, like, here, are the, here's the kind of the things that I'm thinking of, right? Okay, at this point, the only thing that I'm thinking about this, right, because we have all of our flex positions, is that I know that one of my tether friends over here, and, and this is why we split up the group and separate ourselves out so that way we can everybody can see who has what and who needs to flex um if like my partner was over here right on the right side maybe i'll go back to a video that doesn't have it but um but here i have the circle one of my partners has the circle which means that i'm going to flex and one of the other things that we do that really 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 helped us out was um this debuff right here here let me get the thing this debuff right here could be either close or far. In this case, it's close. Not close, it's actually mid and far. And then what we do, I don't know if you can see it right here. I'll actually like blow this up, but we have two macros. We have one that hits like close, which is where we have, if the if on this macro, the eye was like right here, um, we have the left group that lines up with the X, tri X square triangles and circle. And then we have the right group line up like this. So. So this really helps. Vey actually does a really good job of, of hitting these macros um, because he pay attention. He pays attention to um, uh, to this debuff, and so the rest of us. That's great. We don't have to pay attention to that debuff. And there's a lot of things that come out at this time. And and when the first time I saw it, I remember it just being so super fast that I'm like, I have no idea how I'm ever going to like figure this thing out. And um, it was interesting, one of, one of the things that we were talking about, um, uh, we were just having sort of a casual conversation during raid. And if, if this if this mechanic were to be placed like later, say like in P, you know, in phase four or, fa or you know, phase phase three or four, world first progression would have would have been pushed back like three or four days just from this one mechanic. But luckily it's it's early, it's early on. And like, here we go. So at this point, um, at this point, I look at, you know, I look at, okay, my partner is there. I need to flex. I need to flex left. One of the things that I think we do is we keep the party flexing exactly the same as the first, as the first phases. So that way it sort of becomes like natural and you're always, well, actually no. Well, yeah, I guess you can do that, right? Because... The, these letter these because these the PlayStation markers are es essentially like your partner who has the same number as you in the earlier phases. So uh, I wouldn't put it past you guys or that many groups to have the same sort of uh, situation. Um, but anyway, everything happens really fast. But the first thing I do, right? So there's a lot of there's a lot of ads, right? And 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 the way that I look at it is that there are ads that are the fake ads. And the ad that's in the middle here, the ad that's in the middle, this is a decoy. This is a decoy. What you want to look for is you want to look for the ad that has the weapons. So you want to look for the weapons right here. And luckily, both weapons. So so the girl will have the little, the little ice skates. Uh, her, her legs will be the weapons. And then uh, the guy will have weapons. And there's, there's four different patterns here. And you can look at other guides for like the dodging of the four different patterns. So we all go to the dude, there's a dude, and then at this point when I get to the dude, I'm looking for the eye. And you can see me, you can see me like spin my camera around because I'm sort of like, okay, I run to the dude, great, that's a safe spot, there's the eye, I know that I have to run left, and then I look back down to the, um, 
to the party chat, which they posted the macro for mid, and now I know about where to go to um, because I remembered I had the circle from before. So at this point, um, one of the things that helped us out, well, helps me out is like, you can see here, let's see if I tilt my camera up. Okay, there we go. If I do this, right? So you can see here is that the eye, the eye, the eye, the eye is right here, right? And uh, one of the other things to know is that uh, just like uh, Thornton, um, you can see the little uh, Mitsubishi symbols uh, right here around the stage. Um, I don't know where that one is, right here? Yeah. So the eye will always spawn on a Mitsubishi symbol. The, the way that our markers are set up, which is how I how I sort of pay attention to it, is that if the eye is on D, then the other letter marker opposite of it is where the laser beam is going through. So even though, like, if we back this up for a second, right? So sometimes, like, people can have their cameras, like, all, like, wonky and movement. I look at the eye, and I actually know exactly where to go. And at this point, like, I'm not even looking at the eye, but because I know it's at D, and I know the laser beam is going through B, I know that going to 2 is my spot, and it's actually 2 ticks down um, right here. Um, if you if you are uh, if you are on the bottom or if you're on the top for the uh, for the middle two It's a little bit different, but you can see here. I move right there uh, right into where these markers are and then if we scrub here This is our mid position, right? And you've seen other guides and you've watched other guides and they're like you have to do this But the reason why you do this is because if you, the tethers are too far apart um, You're gonna explode and after two too close together. You're going to explode, but Here's the thing, the reason why I really do like our marker setup is because if you take this marker right here, right? So it's it's basically drawing three lines, right? Or in my mind, the eye is here, it's on a D marker. Likewise, if it was on a, a numbered marker, the opposite numbered marker would be where the laser is going through. Um, so the laser is going through here, right? But I don't even have to think of dodging the laser AOE when it comes through because this if i draw if i draw a line from this marker all the way through to this marker you can see that we're like all of us are lined up based on this line marker and we dodge it every single time and don't even have to worry about it likewise on this side right if i draw a line all the way through this number one for mid yeah you can see we're all lined up like drawing that line through there so that's why i really like this marker setup and i know some parties have their markers like like inward like this which you know can be good but honestly um this is sort of like how i see what it is and look at that it's all like a nice little line thing across uh, across everything it's amazing so line goes through the middle as soon as that hits um two people will get the stack markers on them and then at this point sometimes uh the stack marker will appear on the same lines and then that way you'll have to flex and I tell you, like, my mind just cannot work um, with the flexing. And, and since it's since it's mid, uh, other guides have said, like, since, the, since this is mid, actually, let me let me back up for a second. All right. Because there's there's a couple of different things that are happening here. The way that I the way that I think about it. Right. Is that like after after the my position, I'm like, I'm done. I I, I don't need to worry about you know, symbols or letters or, or any of that stuff. But the thing that I'm looking for now is uh, my partner to see if I need to swap, you know, my and and then uh, one of the things is, let me see if I could back up here. I don't know if we could actually see it. Oh, yeah. So, OK, like during this, do you see these two puddles right here? Right. You may have missed them. Um, let me see here. Come on, draw a thing on the thing. All right, see this puddle right here and this puddle right here? You may have missed them from before. This is where the two real quote unquote ads will spawn. So you can ignore all these other uh, all these other decoys, right? So look for the mercury puddle, one in the center and then one right here. And, and essentially this becomes the new north. I, I already know from like just looking at this that that because it's mid, one group is going to get knocked back south right here, and the other group is going to get knocked back over here to the right, and then we stand inside the markers because that's the perfect distance. Again, with the markers, this is why we have it set up this way, 
being in mid, this is the perfect marker setup to to not, you know, kill everybody else with like a tether stretch or whatever. Um, and we go through this mechanic uh, very easily now because of understanding um, those sort of that sort of uh, idea or or seeing that right as this plays out. I'm sitting here, I'm looking, you know, I get to my thing, I line up, you can see my camera, I'm lining up via the three and the two. Um, I, I look into the center of the stage, and as you can see, you can see these mercury puddles. You can see the ads, like, forming, right? Like, they're they're coming up, like, right here, like, one in the middle, and then one over at A. I know that A is north, and I don't have to look at all these other ads, so what you gotta do is just pay attention to the ads that are forming, not the ads that are already formed. So there we go, they form, they form, and now we know where north is. Or you can also look, uh, you can look at the three ads, the three ads are north. Oh, and another thing too is that um, because I, because this isn't my normal spot, I flexed over to the left, the left side. Um, I'm going to be on the left, like, we, 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 we do this like, whoever's on the left group is going to the quote-unquote left side of the knockback. And whoever's on the right side of the group, of the, of the line, AOE is going to the right side of the knockback uh, just to just to make it like super easy so we're not having to like reflex back to our original positions and all of that no it's like it's like as it goes because this entire thing comes out really quick so we go here I don't think there's any flexes um, I get here we set up for mid and we get knocked back and we all stand in the markers and everything is everything is perfect now the real ad at this point um, is the ad that spawned at A, um, but it's the ad that's north, uh, and then the, of course the girl in the middle, and all the rest of them disappear. But let me go back and let me see if I can find just another iteration of this mechanic to see, to kind of to kind of guide you guys again on like how my thought process like kind of works, you know? Okay, so at this point, I'm thinking, all right, got to prepare for the letters, like. You know, my team's my team set up. Do I need to flex or not? So first look at the letters like, okay, I do need to flex. I'm like my letter is X. And then I look in my debuff bar and then um or or somebody does a call out and it's like mid. Ve pops the Ve pops the macro, which is either close or far. So we go here, uh we look at the pattern, we look at the the ads and their weapons um, and in this case the girl has her skates and the dude has nothing so we got to go to the girl and then I and then I as I'm running to the girl I already know where the eye is so I'm going to flex to my position by looking at the party list and I know that the eye is at two so I'm gonna go to B right here and since it's mid again uh, like I don't even have to look at anything now. Now I'm looking at the now you see the I turn my camera in I'm looking at the the mercury puddles right here So I know that B is going to be the new north after the things go off Look at the ad, look at the ads forming they form um, I don't need to swap here. I do no. I don't need to swap here. I think or I do swap Yeah, there we go um because yes, I do swap because one of my partners swapped. Okay, so you see this right here, right? Um, so as we're coming in, I'm tethered to somebody uh, who has the stack marker, and somebody else is tethered to somebody who has a stack marker. And at this point, it's like you also have a flex priority system here, and I'm guessing it's the exact same. Or one person out there just calls it and like you know uh, who flexes for who. So it's like. You know, Lycona and uh, and Ziza flexes. So I know that I was on the left side. Now I'm going to the right side. So whenever we're taking this knockback, the people on the right side are always going to the right side. Always. Like, there's no, there's no switch. Whereas the people on the left side are either going, are either going far out this way. Here, let me get my, let me get this. The, the people on the left side are, are going out this way. Or they're going south. People, people who are on the right, they always go this way, 100% of the time. So now that there was a flex, and uh, we go back to our spots, and then it's you know it's uh, mid again. And then I look at the 
Uh, I look at the ad up north, and then I'm like, oh, okay, you know. And then they pull the ads back in the middle, and there's probably some shenanigans that go on that I don't understand. But essentially, I just stay here for the rest of the phase. And the tanks and the healers, they do everything. Um, well, technically not, but yeah, it sure feels like it. Okay, here we are. Great. Uh, I am not flexing in this part. Oh, and it's also far, too. This is great. So you can see that. And I'll, I'll probably go back and like post the, the macros that we use. Um, but here we go, uh, and as you can see, basically, like, the person with a triangle and the person with a square, like, one of them needs to flex, and they have flex conditions, and the only thing I know is, like, I always flex if I have a, a, the same shape on my side. Uh, just spend some time with your party and, like, how you guys, like, organize your flex positions, and, and you'll be okay. But in this case, uh, I go to the right. Oh, and also this is great, too. Um, the one AoE dodge, which for... Uh, if the girl does not have the skates and the guy has the shield, then it's going to be side dude. Oh, and the what, the the way that we call out those a those AOEs is um, we call it go to the dude, go to the chick, side dude, or completely out. Don't worry, you'll do you'll do this mechanic about 800 times before you get you know before you get to the later phases, and and you'll you'll figure it out and you'll get into a flow and a pattern. So don't worry, you you have you have quite a bit of time. For me, in order to gauge like. The side dude again it's with these markers which is why I, I really like the way that we had our marker set up is that i can draw a 90 degree angle from this marker here to here and that's my spot like that's that's the distance to to dodge the aoe i just run to this like sort of 90 degree um tangent right here and then as i do there i spin my camera around i look for the eye i know my spot uh i was the circle so my spot is always down low but now you can see here that the uh, the macro has changed, and we have, um, and it's it's basically on the left side it's flipped. The right side always stays x square triangle circle. The left side, depending on if it's mid or far, can flex to uh, to circle triangle uh, square x. Um, one of the things like that I was saying way earlier before. What does help me is that I can I can do this uh, like I have a little I have this little cheat sheet right here, which I just marked through so you guys can't see it on your videos, which is um, a thing. But essentially, like I can I can do the opposite, right? Like count count backwards or basically if you're an X or square or a triangle, you can always flip if you're on the left side. And that's sort of how I I work it out in my brain. But at this point, I don't flex. I see that uh, the eye is at a number. So the, la the laser is going through a number. I'm two ticks down from the Mitsubishi symbol. I'm good to go. It's far, so we're gonna stretch the tethers out to, uh, to the right and left. I see, where the, um, I see where the male formed, which was on the left. All of our stacks are good. This guy, I don't know what he's doing, but he likes to run around the stage because there's plenty of time. We both get knocked back, and then at this point, for far, we stretch it all the way to the edge. Same with the other group. And there we go. That's uh, that's solving through that, or at least that's how my mind works. Go back to the male. That male, everybody gets popped into the middle. We just kind of hang out here, do single targets. And then the dude will pull out his shield. Once he pulls out his shield, uh, as soon as this cast bar goes off, uh, both of them will be targetable for maybe like two GCDs, and you can see here that I sort of hold and like pop a whole bunch of different, whole bunch of, um, watch my calls it, uh, GCDs that'll hit both of them. This part you've probably already seen guides for it. Uh, the tank picks up picks up tethers. They either do clockwise or counterclockwise. I think it's based off of the barred AOE that's coming down. There's also a debuff on them that goes either near. They either have to stand near or far from the ads, I think. I really don't understand it. All I know is that these, uh, the party stacks in the middle, so that way we can bait the barred AoE that's coming through the middle. We dodge to one side. I'm alone. Wah wah. Uh, the tanks do their things. They hop back in. Um, sometimes they use their gap closers, if they have one, uh, to hit the boss. These flares, we just stand in the middle. Uh, one of our party members looks around to the outside of the stage and finds the dude with the shield. And maybe it's here. Yeah, so he finds the dude with the shield. And now you can see um, both of our tanks uh, sort of stand 
you'll see where they stand. So they stand uh, about right here. The tank that gets hit needs to run around the party and, and go away. And then the tank that does not get hit, they need to go in and stand with the party. So if that tank gets hit, Bay runs with us, Venom comes in. So the, whoever took the first hit cannot take the second hit or else they're gonna die. This meteor is just like a jebate. It, it, it doesn't do anything if you like heal and mitigate through it. Um, by that time, the dude is dead, and then we focus all of our attention on the on the chick, and then, um, yeah, and then at this point, uh, DP, you could you you could use your 60 minute, uh, not 60 minute. Holy god, that would be a really long fight. Use your 60 second cooldowns here, um, but do not use your two minutes. When the cast bar gets about to the S, you want to have her to about 20 percent or below, and that's a good timing for it. And and right now, everybody is just building up gauge, building up, you know, building up all of the things. And, and we pushed her really fast in this phase. You don't want to push her too fast or else everybody's cooldowns will get messed up, just like the first phase. Um, you can see I'm like already maxed and like we're already killing her. So I like completely disengage and I just stay and watch, you know, she like, you know, just just hang out. Now, at this point, um, the next phase is just like uh, in Thornton with uh roth frame roth oh my god roth flames which is basically the purple circle debuff um four people will get the purple circle debuff uh two people will get these white debuffs and then two people will get nothing the two people with nothing will have to stack with the people that have the white debuffs and then the four people will spread out but here i'm gonna go through it and like this is how we all like set it up and plan so you see how we all line up like this so here's how we line up, right? We have the tanks, uh, again, we have the tanks and healers line up over here. We have the DPS line up uh, right here. The one, the reason why we line up like this, right? Let's say for instance that four of these DPS get the purple. Well, that means that Pally can take, uh, can take the outside here. Brave can go here. Um, Ziza can go sort of like towards the south or like actually more towards sea and then I can go all the way over here because because that means if, if the four of us get all four then the tanks and the healers um, they'll they'll go up north and whoever has the white like one person who has the white marker will be here one person who has the white marker will be there and then the two empty folks will be uh, stacking with those partners and uh, it, it makes it really easy because then you can look at the D you can look at the party list and understand like, oh, if if only two DPS have the purple marker, then the, those two DPS will be here and here. And then the healers and the tanks can be over here. So you don't even have to look at the healers and tanks because they're thinking of the same thing on the other side. And and that's why we sort of line up line up like this. So you don't have to really like you don't have to pay attention to anybody else except for your co DPS or your co tank healers play, but you'll see here. We all, we all line up. And then at this point I'm looking at the debuff and we have Pally over here is really good at, at marking the people who have the white, um, who have the white debuff right here. And hey, perfect example, as you can see, like all four DPS get the purples. So I know that since I'm most left, see how the tanks and healers are running up there and they're going to take their things. Now at this point, uh, you'll see these hands forms, uh, same as every other mechanic, like as the hand, whichever hands form first, that's the AOE that goes off first. So I just, all I do is I just go and stand in between the hands. Now at the same time, you have to stay on the outside of the stage because this little Jabati um, electrical blue AOE comes through. And here's the thing that caught a lot of people and, and, it, and it catches everybody and it will catch you is that if we back this up, if we back this up like two seconds, right? You see this, uh, you see this line right here, this line? That is not the line of the AOE. If you stand here, you will die. <laughs> um, it's happened a lot. The blue AOE actually comes out just about right uh, like that. So you really need to be like, a step away from the edge of the stage where you are. You need to be away. You can see, see there it is. And as soon as you see the blue, it's not like the regular AOEs, you can move in. Um, but essentially you move in, there's another wave AOE. So we move in, then we move back out. And now here's, here's the thing, right? 
you can think of it like, oh, the first the first hand like appeared and that's the AoE that's going to go off first, so I need to dodge that AoE. But I don't do that. Like you, like some people might do that and might remember, but at this point, I'm just worrying about dodging this AoE um, that's coming out from the middle. Essentially, you can just stand in between um, in between the hands and then as this goes, there's one AoE, dodge, dodge the outside, and then this is this is where I follow the AoE into the stage. So the movement is pretty precise. There it is, right into the movement, and then we go in, uh, pop pots, pop two, you know, pop your two minutes, and then go to town. All of these things are all about the timings, and uh, as you can see here, if you have the white markers, um, then you're just going to be running with your partner and stacking with your partner. Um, so I, so I look here, I stand on the outside, I see the blue, I go in, out, you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around, that's what it's all about, and boom, and then you hit. And that's my timing, which is weird, but here we are. But essentially, uh, you know, I'll do that again. We run in, run back out, make sure you're not on the line and you're actually like out outside of the stage. This one AoE hits, run. I run to the outside, it disappears, start running to the other one, and then just follow that AoE line in. And uh, there's plenty of space uh, between like your partner here uh, to do it that way. And as you can see here, once we come in and stack, like these AoE bubbles, they they overlap, but they never touch. They never touch your partner right here. So that's one of those other things. It's like let the AoEs dictate your movement and. All you have to do is like react and go to the go to the safe place and you'll dodge this thing every single time. It's 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 um it's that easy. Hi, I said it. Yes, I did. And then we go in here. This is where you pop your two minutes. Two minutes pop, boss turns to A. Um now at this point, uh you'll have a lot of healer you'll have healers and um folks like me who need to get like, you know, all of their buffs on everybody. So one of the things that we do is we, we have our normal clock positions here. After the boss like hits his flashies and and we all get all of the debuffs, like that's when that's when we sort of like move to our clock positions. But essentially we, we're all like how should I say? Not necessarily clock positions, but everybody's got like their own spot. And we everybody kind of say it stays in their spot. So like for me, I'm I, I look at I look at A, I pop tech step as soon as it comes out. Boom, and then I, I do all my openers, but then I sort of run to my like clock spot a little bit a little bit out. Um, and then, you know, dump everything. Now, here's the thing with this. You don't have to look at any of these one minute 59s or things or this one minute whatever. Only thing that that we do in this part are the colors uh, are the colors the same or are they opposite colors? Um, or inverse, we actually call it. Like same colors or inverse. But here's the thing, right? Alrighty, so two people will get the red markers and two people will get the blue markers. Two people will get white tethers and two people will get red tethers. Then you look at the debuff list and in this case, Vey, who has the blue marker and the defamation, we know that during this entire phase, for the rest of the phase, the people who get the blue marker will always have defamation and the people with the red markers will always be the stacks. The people with the blue tethers will always stack together with the stack color, and in this case it's red, and uh, because the people with the red markers have the stack debuff, they're going to stand in their towers um, and, and stack with the people who have the blue tethers. The people with the red tethers will always go to the side that with the colors that have the defamations. That's why when we say colors are either normal or inverse, like, like in this case it's inverse, blue tethers will go stack with the red uh, marker people and red tethers will go to the blue side and and that's how I work it out in my mind is just like Inverse colors like if I need to stack I stack with these colors um, If it's either normal or inverse so in this case they are opposite. So let's see how it all plays out Hit play. So right now here's what I'm thinking it's like okay, I'm tethers I have less priorities like tethers tether people can can run over each other but the blue, but if you hit the if you hit the neon people with the blues or the red markers on them, it's just like Nietzsche. That that's it'll pass it to somebody before you actually need to pass it. 
and that's a bad thing and it's a complete wipe like there's like if you don't do this phase perfectly there's no way to recover it i mean there's there's like one chance in a very specific thing which i think we did but then the later phases get like super hard and they just don't want to deal with it but we also have priority uh sort of lanes and i'll explain that after we kind of look through this so the the tether people uh we kind of go through the middle uh reds are stacks so colors are opposite right so we have opposite colors so blue tethers go to the stack the things explode half a gcd or a gcd after explode you go into it grab your thing and go at this point the tether people so one of the rules that we made was that the tether people are the ones that are getting other people with the neons that really solved a lot of like oh I, do i need to pass it or do i need to not no the responsibility of getting their neon uh getting their red markers is is the responsibility of the tether people first tethers break at that moment well those those were the second tethers so let, let's let's continue let's continue this i'll kind of like go through it through my thoughts so here's a couple of things right um these towers were very fortunate for me in this spot um you have to look at your partner again uh to make sure that you know how are you how you're running um these are stacks again and you see here i don't move i just stay right here and do my little turret dps now i did move a little bit to the right to give Vay some space over here. So that way, um, because at the moment you'll see that the people who did have the Nietzsche's that, that didn't pass it, they'll explode. So you have to just stay away from people. Also at every phase, we have one of our healers goes into the middle and does uh, some mitigation and healing. That's one of the things to be aware of is that if she goes into the middle, or at least I'm aware of, if she goes into the middle and she has like the neon or she has like the red and blue marker, she'll explode. So like you can't really go into the middle you just kind of have to stay like on the outer boss's hit ring. Um, and uh, at this moment, I know that she doesn't have a thing. So I move into the middle because I'm also looking at my partners and, and, and everybody that way. Um, so it's opposite colors. So I know that um, I know that for the red tethers here. Um, oh, and and also here. Here's a here's a good, good example of how we determine who moves where and who has priority on moving because it can be a cluster but once you get this movement down you'll cross over each other less and it'll be smooth sailing there are three sort of uh racing lanes that i like to that i like to think about and here here's one lane right this is one lane right this is one lane this is the second lane and then you have the in and you have just have the inside lane that you like run through the boss the way that uh, we prioritize movement is that the people with the neon signs are always on the outside lanes. The people with the tethers are all, it can always cross on the inside lanes because the people who have the tethers can't pass the tethers back and forth. Yet, if you hit one of these guys, you're going to accidentally pass it. The, the people with the colors automatically have priority on the, on the outside lanes. That way, people are less likely to cross over each other and hit each other when they're moving to their spot. One of the things that if you wanted to even go a little bit further is that the people with the defamation defamations will have um, will be on the outside outside lanes and the people with the stack markers will be on the inside lanes um, or you can vice versa, like however your party kind of wants to do it this way when you're in a situation where you need to get to your tower that's on the opposite side of the stage um, or you need to get into your position you know who has priority to go um, out. And um, if we back this up for, for a second, here, here's what I'm thinking about, like like keeping that in mind, right? Uh, here's sort of what I'm thinking about with like the lanes on the outside. I'm giving Vey priority of a lane to go on the outside. He knows he needs to take the lanes on the outside at some point. And that's why you see me move in like this to give him space to go uh, either way. And then as soon as these towers spawn i know it's opposite colors at this point and i know that i know that my partner amon right here like he needs to go like amon's right here he needs to go and stand over here so i know that my spot is going to be somewhere here but i don't want to just beeline it all the way over here i want to look to see who is around me right and so venom right here and vey i know that venom needs to get this tower they needs to get that tower um, so they, they're going to have to like cross paths at each other. 
I need to I need to just stay away for a moment um, because their their tower the towers are a little bit more everything's important but the towers are a little bit more important than tethers um, just because uh, just because you can run well you need to be in a set spot whereas tethers you kind of need to be in the set spot but you can be a little bit loosey goosey you try not to be but um, but that's the way to do it so let me back up another another second right. My little thingies explode, right? Because I got the tethers. And now I move in. I know where I need to go. I, I let Venom and Vey figure it out. They figure it out. They run. Pally actually runs. And another another example right here, too, is like sometimes your partner will get caught, uh, like in this case. And uh, it's no fault of anyone's. It's mainly just like where the towers spawn. But sometimes you'll get caught. Like, for instance, Venom, he came from all the way over here and he was like, oh, yeah, this is my tower. But he looked for Pally, who was coming up behind him. So, in order to help Pally make a tower, because he can't, he can't make it all the way over here, Venom is closer to this other tower. So Venom is going to take the other tower. Pally is going to take this tower. And really, that that really right here, it's paying attention to where your partner is and and which tower you get, which is uh, oh so critically important. And so you can see, like everybody goes do their things. Um, I stand here with the tethers a bit away and then uh, and then everybody um, at this moment once like the defamations goes off and the stack markers go off everybody moves into the uh, the hit ring uh, on the uh, on the intercardinals right here then the tether people picks it up and we move in and we break our tether and then Amon and I kind of stand there those explosions go off and then this fourth one I think it's the fourth one. Everybody just just goes and runs through whatever because you can't pass after the fourth thing. You can't pass any of these neon things to other people. Like the mechanics are already done and already like uh, sorted. So there you can see like Amon and I had defamations. Everybody's up at the up at the north, and then they break the tether, and then it's sort of all finished. Um, we LB here. Uh, we stay away from the neon people. Everything goes down, and if you're at about 26%, you're totally on target. Now, now there's two different ways you could do it. Um, everybody can pop two minutes uh, at this moment, but we opted to hit that limit break here because there's going to be monitors coming out in the next part. But I, I really wanted to go back and focus on maybe another set of conditions for uh, for this phase because once you get the timings. Of this phase and once you understand like the, the lanes like the people with the Nietzsche's have priority on the outside tethers are on the inside that's when this phase like completely and flows very smoothly and you don't even need to um, you still need to sort of wiggle your way around to spots but having the having the priority and knowing knowing where your partner is knowing the priority knowing that there are lanes on the outside to get to your towers and and who's moving where everything like, you don't even have to think about this phase. It's just like, look at the people with the red or blue neon marker. If the blue people have the stack debuff, then the colors are the same, and blue tethers stack with the blue markers. Red tethers uh, go towards the red marker people and the red towers. If the red people have the stack, then it's opposite colors. Blue tethers stack with the red markers, or they actually go to the opposite towers, and red tethers are on the blue towers. The people who are doing tethers are always picking up the red or blue marker debuff. And remember, the people that have had the markers will also explode. So you got to be away from them. So let's go over this again, just because I wanted to, you know, reiterate. And I'll probably go over it a third time, just just so you can you know, like understand how my mind works. So at this point, I'm like, OK, I have a red thing on me. I look at my debuff bar. Here's the like there's the three little people. So reds need to stack. So this is opposite colors. So you can see I take a step out, um, or Vey takes a step out, I take a step out. Um, of course I do that to get... And then uh, at this point, uh, at this point I'm like, oh great, I'm in a tower. But I also look at where Brave is, because Brave is my partner, and I'm like, oh, well he's got his tower. Cool, I'm done, I don't need to worry about it. Um, but if Brave was over here at like number three, and, and then he has to get to a tower, doesn't make sense for him to run all the way over to the other side. I would flex to the other tower and and do it that way. So now, as you can see here, we get sort of like close into the middle. 
Um, the blue tethers come to us, we stack. Uh, people with the neons stay very still. And then um, the timings of the breaking the tethers, it's actually, or the blue tethers break when they go and get their Nisi pickup um, or the red marker pickup, and then they go off this way. And actually the, the way that we had it too was that since the, the tether people always move, so the people who are exploding with the uh, with the original um, red markers, they're always on, on an intercardinal. And then the people who, after they pick up their tethers, if they're on the cardinal spots, then everybody just doesn't get hit. And everybody stays where they are. Let that AOE explode, and then you can start moving. So I, I look in the middle. Uh, Usada's there because she's she's got a red thing on her. She's the one that's healing. So I'm like, okay, I don't want to go too far in the middle. Um, I'm lower priority. And then, so tethers are opposite. So I know that, I know that Brave's my partner. Brave is a caster, and he's got to uh, he's got to go to his spot. And sometimes it gets a little wonky. Like, like the lanes are sort of a guideline. They're not like set in stone. Um, and you can see here, it was it was a bit dodge. Um, but uh, I ran all the way to the other side. Um, we were good to go, and there's plenty of time. And as you can see, like the the blue tethers break broke by the time that um, by the time that me and Brave with the red tethers got our pickup Nitsi. And then by the time that we get together to pop it like this, the the debuffs that the the magic vol uh, debuff drops off from the blue tethers up north. Every all the, all the timings work out totally cool like in in this in this setup right so it's it's break white people get their tethers the tether uh, white white people no. sorry no right. white tethers jesus um white tethers get theirs when they get theirs it breaks when we get ours and we run in then the red tethers break and you're you're solved for these first things um make sure not to stand on people now now at this point brave sees me i see him he is going to move to the other. Uh, he's going to move to the other. Um, the the blue thing. So that that's one of the things that you know is, is to be situationally aware of. Um, and then Usada comes out here and she does her thing and I do my thing and then we step into the boss's hitbox. Oh, in the pass you always want to be on the boss's hitbox for the pass. So there it is. They get their thing, they break it, and and it's just it, it really is like clockwork. Like if you get this movement uh, down, everything else becomes like equally whatever. And I think, oh my god, I oh no, this is the fourth one. Gee whiz, I had a heart attack there. I was like, why am I running in the mill? Because the fourth one, at, when when the fourth one is done and final, you can just you can just make a beeline for where you need to be. And luckily here, you can see that um, the red tethers. Uh, the way that we call it, we, we say, uh, when the fourth one comes up, we say, um, everyone at red or everyone at blue. And we say, except for, like in this case, it'd be everyone at, everyone at red except for Aziza and Usada, because they're the ones that have the defamations and they need to be like away from everyone else. When, when we stand here, uh, there's a couple other parties that stand like north and south. It's all totally fine, just as long as you don't get hit by the defamations. And there's somebody standing in with uh, their partners on the red uh, right here. So right before you see like that tether blew up and then afterwards you could see me run away with the white tether like after the fact. And you know, same principles here and you know, Ziza griefs, uh, you know, the tanks because he's about to explode, but he's at A and yeah, so there you go. So now after all that's done, uh, we get critical error. Um, at this point, you want to get the boss to about 20%. Um, if you're at 20%, you're in a good DPS uh, spot. Uh, and then this is monitors. And literally, like, uh, I don't... I do understand it, but I only I only understand the positions that I need to flex to and, and, um, and where to go. And uh, at this point, I'll put up the... I'll put up, like the numbers on where folks need to go to and really it's just a flex priority the only thing i do the only thing i know is that um 
is, uh, and we'll go over it like real quick, right? So you guys know how monitor works. Um, one side faces your character, the other side does not. You want to face the monitor AOE side, so like right here, uh, Pally is facing this way. This monitor is going like this, this monitor is going like this, right? Blowing through, blowing through. And then the boss also has monitors too, so this side is going to get cleaved. Um, and the only thing I know is that everyone needs to get hit with one single monitor, and this setup is the way that we do it. And I'll go back into the thing and like put the graphic on here. Um, I'll make a little note uh, to put the monitor graphic of what we do. And uh, I'll kind of I'll kind of move on because um, it it really is a, it really is about positioning. Um, you can you can see sort of our positions right here. It's totally fine. Everybody gets an AOE on them. Um, so you kind of, you can't be like really close or next to each other. So you have to be in this configuration. Yeah, let's continue. Monitors goes off. Everybody gets hit, hit by one. Um, you know, you just got to look at the list and the flex priority. And then, um, yeah, it's a whole bunch of flex priority stuff. Um, kill the boss. Once, once you get here, um, we now set up for, uh, this broken Steve. All right, so I was terrible at explaining this on the fly, so let me see if I can actually summarize this after I wrote it down. So we set up on the sides in our light party groups. Uh, the order from north is tank, range, healer, and melee at the south. We optimize these positions so melees can get their flank and their rear hits. The healers have minimum movement and can get to the south faster uh, so they can heal and top everyone, everyone up after the double beams. The range DPS are next, uh, since if they need to flex, they're the ones that have to move the furthest uh, to the other spot, to the other flex position, followed by the tanks way up north who never flex. So the stack beams will target two random players, and our rule is that whoever is furthest south will always flex for the beam. Say for instance that me and Venom both got the stack beam. I'm going to flex to the other side because I'm closer to the south. But if me and Amon here both got the stack markers, Amon flexes to the other side because he's closer to the south. And that uh, stays for every combination. Like if Venom had it and Amon had it, Amon would still flex. If I had it and Ziza had it, uh, Ziza would flex over. Uh, then the melee on the other side has to pay attention to see if there is a flex or not, because the melees are going to be flexing the most uh, out of this, out of the, the, the beam hits. So what I do is, uh, and what you can do, is stand just outside on the boss's hit ring. I line up between the hit ring and the D marker, uh, but other foes can use the markers to line up as well. Venom's in between 4 and D in this case, I'm on D, Amon's between D and 3, and Ziza's on the 3 marker. And uh, usually uh, you're either standing in between a marker or you're standing on a marker, that's about the correct spread distance uh, to take the first beams. And then when you go back down to south for the party beams, you can stand in between the south markers on the boss and everything will work itself out and you'll be totally fine. So the timings that I use to start my run to the south position is basically when you see the giant laser beams go off and hit everybody. As soon as you see that anim animation, uh, you can run. And what you, what it, and you have to make a direct beeline to the south. You can't go around the outside of the boss's hit ring or else you're going to get hit by the second, like, party-wide beams that, or the individual beams that come up. Um, same with the second. Uh, although you have to be a little bit more careful because there's, uh, there's the blue AoE that expands out from the middle. But the timing, if you're standing on the boss's hit ring, on the outside of the boss's hit ring, the timing works out to where once you see those beams go out to the entire party, uh, that's when you can move into the boss and then down to south. Um... But never, you know, just sort of like a rule of thumb, never follow along the boss's uh, hit ring. Uh, don't don't make that arc. Like, make a, just like, as soon as you get hit, as soon as the beams come out, like, go straight there. Um, so you can actually make the party stack. Uh, and the third time is tricky. It's the same exact movement, but for the first two runs, you're conditioned to get to your spot and then sort of take a step in towards the boss, and you can't do that. Yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of times that we got killed for it, but you just have to be patient. You just have to kind of chill. Like like after you reach the south for the third time, I consider 
th this whole entire phase quote unquote over, but it's not really over because you have to sit here and what I'm looking for at this point is to see that giant um, blue blob of AOE uh, hits like in the middle. And as soon as I see that blue blob of AOE, that's when you run in. But just remember the third, like, for the first couple of times you do this, it's going to be frantic and it's going to be chaotic and you're going to get hit by this. Uh, a lot of times we call out like, wait, just chill after the third party beam goes out to, to everybody and you get back to south for the third time. Just wait, just chill, just relax. And then as you see that AOE, uh, blue AOE coming out from the boss's center, that's when you take a step in and you got it. You're good to go. Uh, it takes a bit of practice to get the timings down. Um, but once you hit 19%, you'll push it into the next phase. Now, another thing I forgot to mention, you can either use Limit Break in the last phase or your two minutes here. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use, just as long as you use uh, one or the other. Uh, so in the last phase, you could use either LB or your two minutes. And in this phase, you could use your two minutes or LB. Um, it, it just doesn't matter which order. Just do what your group is most comfortable with. Uh, for Actually, for one of our runs, or for our usual run, we use LB in the last phase, and we use our two minutes here uh, when the when both groups come back for the second beam hit at south. Um, and on the first beam hit, we also hit sprint, so that way we it's we can run faster back to our spots and then back to south. Uh, sprint really helps out a huge uh, amount here, a tremendous amount. There was one instance where we actually had to swap because we actually had an accidental death um, and it was the last pull of the night and we got that clear. So what we did was we used uh, a couple of two minutes in the last phase uh, with monitors to take down Steve and then for broken Steve, we actually used an LB3 and I actually had a two minutes up. So we sort of mix and mashed and swapped it around um, and do that just depending on your party's like DPS combos. Um, Obviously, big mitigations again, and then we're in uh, this phase. And before we move on, I'm pretty long-winded explaining this entire phase. So down in the comments below, well, not the comments, but down in the description below, I'll have the explanations that uh, our raid leader, my raid leader, had, had given us. Those videos were really helpful because we went over all the iterations and the explanations and all of that. So if you look in the description below you'll find we we go over this phase more in detail and it's and it's kind of like a learning video that helped us out uh, a tremendous amount helped me out a lot which is uh the twins again i think there's a tank i think there's two tank busters so everybody unleashes uh their fury yep so there's one tank buster and i think does he pop his invuln and takes both of them yeah he takes both of them in this case and then Vey take and then Vey takes it, yeah. So there, there's a that's a lot of healing. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that people do this this part, but essentially, um, I don't know how to how to best convey this like phase. Um, and in fact, this entire yeah, this this phase five because uh, because there's a lot of people that do it differently, and really it's just all about like being in a certain position. Um, than not and um, other guides have explained it a lot better so I'm gonna and, and, and the other thing is like you guys heard of the controversy about like you know third-party tools and and all of that all of that jazz well there are third-party tools out there that mimic this phase that you shouldn't ever do but I'm saying like and then this is the thing this is like sort of sort of my opinion and Nobody's ever gonna like, you know, watch through this, like, unless you're crazy because it's already been like two and a half hours for this phase. But essentially, like, our our progression on this fight, it's great to learn the fight and to progress through the fight and get to this phase. But the mechanics and the precision of like this part, like, obviously it's an ultimate, so you need to do everything right. If if we hadn't used some additional help. In other words, our progression on this phase, like the understanding of it or the learning of it and the movement of it was just better. We could we could learn it quicker rather than having to spend rather than having to spend 10 minutes getting all the way to it and then wiping on the first mechanic um, or the next part, like getting, you know, spending 10 minutes. And so it really just for me, it, it just it helped. That's sort of all I want to, to do is like just to help throughout this whole thing. 
Um, and it's unfortunate that I can't talk about it. But but I feel like if you're if you're doing this, then you know of these things, and uh, it just helped us progress. I'm really glad that there's a lot of avenues and a lot of uh, different uh, things that can help with really really difficult fights and understanding the mechanics and don't get me wrong we still had to do it right like you know it's one of those things where i'm like they they, they exist and they they were helpful you know and they and they they helped me like understand mechanics uh a lot a lot better um and a lot faster than than sort of like the real fight would Inter interestingly enough anyway enough with that rant here's how we do this um so we do the little X pattern like this. Um, basically, and there's a whole bunch of different things that like, I kind of look at right here. So the first thing I look at is like, do I have the blue tether or do I have the red tether? That determines what I do for the next couple of phases. And as you can see here, uh, there's two debuffs that come on the party. There's a far and there's a near. Um, we'll get to that later. Um, as, you, as you saw that we were in the, we were in the middle and we all kind of split up, we create this X right here, and the reason why we split up this way is because we want to see not only will this blue tether explode first once the tethers come live. Oh, and I should also say like the the blue tethers that like have the that that are translucent, they're not active yet. They become active later once your debuff turns off. But I never look at the debuff timer because you never need to look at it because of the way that we set this up. So we create an X with the we create an X with the, the red green tethers and with the blue tethers, one party is wide and one party is short and you can see it up here. Basically we use like the beetle's legs, like the beetle's legs are like really wide. What's his name is really short over here. So let's see if I see him. <clears throat> so in other words, uh, at this point the fists spawn and you need to do opposite colors for the spit, for the fists. You need to stand on, stand on a partner. And in this case, whoever has the red tether over here is going to um, whoever has the red tether, they're gonna they're gonna cross the stage, and this person is going to cross the stage, and it it all works itself out. So first things first is that you see them, so you see them running across and running across, and now and now everything is sort of set up for the next part. Now <clears throat> these uh, these rotating tower thingies. Um, some groups like to do the uh, some groups like to take the two blue tether people and get the uh, get the like the the D and the not necessarily these markers but the markers that are not on the bosses. Uh, we like to use the four people with the red tethers in this particular setup. And because I have the blue tethers, the the one thing the one thing that gets a lot of people is this tether explosion right here. People will see this tether explosion and move. And, and you don't want to do that. You just want to stay here. So the thing that I look for is the AoEs that pop. Once the AoEs pop, that's when I move. I don't look at anything else, especially if I'm if I'm uh, a blue tether, right? That's when I move. And then at this point, the people who doesn't... One person will get monitor right here, and this is only for the blue tether, blue tether people. One person will get monitor here. Um, somebody will get hit with the... get hit with the thing, and then... The other two people will stand with the monitor, <clears throat> and then they'll take a stack, and then you look at the beetle boss, and pretty much like I'm running to the far, so w the beetle boss is like further away, um, and then versus close, so like. So I put up a diagram of the positions that we used to help us with this phase. So so like the two people that had the blues that didn't have. The, either the near or far, uh, they go there, and the X reds go there, and then the red tethers spread out. And just by using this diagram, we were able to clear through this like little little part like every single time. Whereas before, we were all kind of like loosey goosey and trying to get into our positions. But once we had sort of like the idea of the spots that we needed to go to, it was far more easy. And then we all sort of like get into our positions, and then all of this, all of this crazy stuff goes off. Um, and every person needs to have three by the end of this phase in order to progress in the next phase. Um, let me back up and see if there's another uh, version of that phase where I'm doing something different, so you can just see my thought process. 
everything hits. It's hard. It hits. Um, all right. So now I have uh, now I have the green tethers, and I'm looking, and now I'm on the the short side, right? So the reason the reason why we have one short blue and then one long blue, like we saw before, was because one of the blues has to explode first before everything goes off, like because we're popping the tethers um, in order, right? So I'm looking at this. The first thing I'm looking at is are my is my colors are my colors the same are they not okay the colors are opposite colors that means that these hands are going to cancel each other out and now i'm going to look at the hands because the the people with the red and green tethers are responsible for picking up the hands and baiting the hands now in this case it's normal but it, but also in this case like it, it, the way that i understood it and this this might get convoluted, but maybe me talking nonsense over here will be a way for you to you know for you to get it and understand it as well. So so every every green person on the opposite side, this tower is their tower. They will always get that tower. There are some cases where this tower you will also pick it up because this tower is going to rotate out this way and this tower is going to rotate out this way my responsibility is i gotta get my tower but i also gotta get this tower as well so i run over here stand in the middle and get that tower so i wait i wait i wait wait for the aoe appear underneath me go <clears throat> and as you can see here i do this i turn my camera back in and then at this point i dodge the aoe's and then go back to the like the number three tower and now everything sort of resolves itself. Now at this point, it's like, who pops their tether? Who pops their tethers first? It's not me. So I'm gonna stretch my tether all the way out to um, the edge. And this AOE is a telegraph thing, so that's no problem. All of that stuff happens again. Everybody gets like a little buff. And then you have to wait here, cause, cause there's um, cause what, what tricked me up uh, a couple of times before. Is that you see this? Um, there are two sets of there are two sets of debuffs that you have to look for. There's this purple one right here, this purple debuff. I don't know if you can see that on my party list or where my mouse is. There's that that purple one. That's that's. Um, you have to wait until those purple ones go away. Then the first two people with the red tethers break them. After after all of this stuff happens, you have to wait for the magic vulnerability debuff to go away. So it's a little of a it's a little bit of a Jabati um, debuff because they all don't end at the same time. They they get put on when those things jump to you, and uh, it's one of those things. Like I'm even learning something now. It's you know the 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 people who. The people who need to break their tethers during this phase, or the the people with the red tethers, are the actual um, are the people who have the the lower timers. Um, so it'd be Ve and um, no, because that's the short thing. What am I talking about? Oh, anybody can anybody can break them. I think they just call it out. And there you go. I I unlearned something that I thought I learned. <laughs> well, there you go. Anywho, let me see if I can find another uh, another phase in here that I'm doing a different thing, and hopefully we get one where I get hit with the with the little shield. Because if you get hit with the shield, you can't take damage anywhere else. I mean, you can like there's different nuances and things, but I think you guys are smart enough to like understand those little nuances. Um, and like I said, you know, a thousand times before, I hope that a lot of this is just, you know, it's sort of like gets the gets the you know the mind rolling and and so you can see it in a in a sort of different perspective than what you might be used to so i have a far away tether and i go over to here i'm looking for my hand i have i have a hand now you can either cross this way like lengthwise or you can cross across the stage you just gotta look for it look for the hand and in this case i'm crossing the stage with my partner there it is um i do a little jump um, just to just to make sure I'm red that this is my this is my marker again and it's the same as last time that's my marker 
wait for the AoE to appear underneath me. That's when I move. Um, let's see if this one does the same thing. I try to do... Uh, these, are, these are the four clear runs. Well, actually, it should be five, but these are the four runs. Uh, one, we got down to like 1%, which was kind of a bummer, but that eh, is what it is. So in this case, I'm blue. And and also, too, you can see Brave uh, coming out a little bit and standing away from me. That's so he can see the, the hands better. But since he knows he's my partner, he's the one that's going to stack to it. You see, so because the hands can be on top of each other and it's hard to see what colors each one has. So that's why Brave stands a, a little bit away from me. And now um, I'm the blue tether and he's the um, and he's the red tether. Uh, uh, what am I? What am I even saying? I'm losing. I'm losing focus. Um, these towers are normal. So wait for the AOE. Oh, in this part too, right? Like you have to break it. You have to like run out a little bit and break the blue tether if you're close to each other. So then we stand here. Maybe I get the thing. I don't get the thing. But you can see like Vey who got hit with the thing. He goes and he kind of stands off. Um, he can't get hit by monitors or anything. Um, and then um, the, the way that the reason why we do this this way is because the red tether people will get hit with the boss's monitor. Um, and then the way that we set it up is that we have the monitor facing the other way. So Amon and them get hit with that monitor. And then the shield comes out. And so everybody like gets hit. It gets like a debuff in order to do the things. So it all works itself out in the end. And now, um, at this point, I will go back and I will get the graph of where we stand on who breaks what tether. It really helped with, you know, not having to, like, fiddle around and figure out stuff. But um, I'll post that. Uh, and here we go. This is another tank buster. And I think Vey pops his invuln, does he? No, he's... He, yeah, he pops his invuln for both of these busters. And then Venom takes it, I think. Or does he keep it? I don't know. Um, we pop all over we pop our 90 second mitigations here and um, this bit right here is uh, what Schma calls it okay future like Kona here because I'm terrible explaining anything on the fly also check out the video below for a more detailed explanation about this entire phase uh, with our group because it was a really good learning experience it really helped me a lot so the two hands appear on the stage and we go to the new north side and line up like this. Uh, Vey has a macro uh, that shows the, the lineup for the PlayStation markers. But once you line up like this, you can forget the PlayStation markers. Uh, we don't need them anymore at this point. From this lineup, we can determine a few different things and set up a few ground rules. The top group here rotates clockwise while the bottom group rotates counterclockwise. The next movement and positioning is determined by who gets what orange markers on their heads. Two partner groups will have both markers, so the furthest rightmost group will take the north and south positions, and the leftmost group will take the east and west positions. And because of the rotation of the top and bottom groups, like the people that are taking east and west know if they need to take east or west. The persons that don't have markers will go to their hand side, like this, while their partners will stretch their tether to the opposite sides and uh, go stand behind their hands. And pretty much from this formula, you can solve any of the conditions and know exactly where to go from this point. Also at this point, there's either mid or far in this case. For mid, you want to be on about the fourth ring, while far is all the way out to the edge. Then you want to remember your cardinal spot for standing in this position once all the lasers go off. And this is where this chart comes in. This chart will tell you what tower you need to be in for the knockback. The tower spawn location always appears at north when you, like where you just lined up for the PlayStation markers, but they could be flipped where the south is the new north. Um, and then at that point, you orient yourself to dodge back into the, into the correct tower. And if it's far, you'll want to stretch your tether out to the edge, or whereas if it's mid, you'll want to be in the middle of the tower. Uh, pretty much it works itself out every single time. Um, and that's sort of how I worked out my brain. This next part, you don't want to use your 60s, you want to hold them. And um, I'm not quite sure what the call out is, but I know that um, three people are on the girl side, the rest of the party is on the 
on the guy side. And honestly, it's like either the girl has legs or she doesn't have legs, so we either move in or we don't move in. In this case, we don't move in, we wait. And then um, usually there are set positions uh, for our team. And uh, I think... I don't know what the call out is based off of, but I know that other guides would. And then we go into it. And then um, these two folks right here are the ones that take the hand tethers. Um, they also got to be careful because the laser beam, you can't really stand on the um, on the marker just yet. Like if you look over at Vey right here, he waits for a second and then goes in. But here's here's sort of the configuration that we um, that we got. And this is a good this is a good sort of uh, overview of where everybody needs to stand in order to make everything sort of work. Two people will get one person will get a short, one person will get a long, and um, the folks that need to get I don't know how it works out. All I know is that these are the positionings. I'm sorry guys. Like this is one of those things where my raid members are a lot smarter than me. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully this helps you out. Check out some other guides. Like I but I think if you're progressing this far in the fight, your team is like smart enough and intelligent enough and you know capable enough to to get through it, you know. Um, but Ziza has the short, Venom has the long. Um, we have one person stand here. We have two people stand here for getting the short, the short stick, and then we have three people on the other side. These are these guys are taking the beams through the middle. Um, the place where you want to stand is um, if you're if you're the short or the long is on the third ring. About the third ring, that's that's about the um, that's about the circumference. Uh, everyone else should be about to the edge. Um, the short people can be a little bit a little bit inwards, but the way that every the way that the, this configuration works itself out is like it all works itself out. Like after after you get solved it. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't know much more about this other than um, other than there is a there is a rhyme or a reason there is a pattern and. Um, yeah. So all the stuff goes up. Uh, just be careful not to move in too quickly after some of these things, uh, because they will snap onto other people, and then it'll just be like a, you know, frustrating thing. And the, and the tanks will will have their, you know, their tank busters, tank busteries. <clears throat> And then this next part is like big brain strat. I don't know how I don't know how somebody calls this out, but essentially you'll get you get the boss in the middle, you get the two ads, and the two ads are essentially the same as uh, the first phase. Uh, and then you'll have uh, you'll have these giant lights, so you'll have to stand in um, in a spot that that's a call out that dodges all the AOEs. And then as soon as that all goes off, you have to look at the next set of ads to go to the next set of spots. You'll, you'll sort of just naturally look and pick up where to go. My mind is not fast enough to, to comprehend all the different AoEs to dodge. I just know that the way that we do it is we have one person call out where to go. Um, and uh, if we back up here in a, in a second, the one thing we do is we say, uh, so it's either the dude or the girl on that side. It's either close, mid, or far, and it's dependent on where those AOEs are going to be landing. So I think here it's going to be dude close because of the way that the AOE patterns hit. And then we have to go uh, stand on the sticks. Uh, we, we call them the sticks. I have no idea why. Um, there are the light beams. Um, and I, I just, the, in my mind, I'm like, I go stand on the light beams near the dude in close, like right underneath the hitbox. And you can see how close like everybody is with this guy. And then the next call out, and then when we're in position for the first one, that's when you look for the, uh, that's when you look for the second call out, which is like, okay, the dude's got the shield, so it's going to be somewhere with the dude, but it's, but the, the girl... Uh, does not have legs. Maybe it's the other way around. 
See, I, I can't even do this when, when things are still. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we go to mid B, and then um, boss jumps away. He's going to do monitors. He always faces north in this pot. And then there's a there's positions on where we and where we stack um, for monitors. Um, and I think it's uh, I think the two people that need to stand and take monitors are the people that other guides have probably done this well. But I think it's um, it can't be ones because ones have to do their thing. It can't be it can't be somebody who has one. It has to be somebody who has two and somebody that yeah. I think it has to be somebody that has um, two two of the stacks. And not the number, not the number ones, because uh, the people on the other side of monitors need to all get hit with a whole bunch of stuff in order to get their thing to uh, twos. And then after it all resolves, um, the threes pick up the tethers. The the people's with the the people with the long and short go stand in their positions, and it sort of everything resolves itself. Now, let me talk about sort of the positioning um, for this. Uh, this was one of those really, this was also a big help, like when we did, um, when we practiced this elsewhere, <laughs> I guess you could say. We had a lot of practice on this phase and, and just understood it. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's basically called first in line, second in lines. People with the far, we, uh, we do two ticks down from the Mitsubishi marker, um, opposite of the, opposite of the boss. And, um, we do, uh, whatchamacallit it. Um, the person who has the short, um, or this little arrow guy, they, they stand opposite the, uh, opposite the beetle. And then the four people who don't do anything, you have one at A, one at C, and then you have two people that are going to take the short hop, um, right over here. And then the people with the three, with the people with the tethers will pick up and stand sort of right here. And then after the tethers go off, they'll take a step in. So that way, like these fars that were this far, like, cause this far, has the potential to jump to Amon or here. And what we want to do as a group, we want to have my far jump to Usada and then Usada's jumps to Vey. And then it all works itself out. So that's why when these guys take a tether, they take a step in. Because the way that all these jump works is that the far goes to the furthest person away um, and the short goes to the shortest person um, to them. So that, that's why you have this little sort of, you know, star configuration. There we go. It's not really a star, whatever. We'll call it a star. Um, yeah, we you you line up in your spots, and there's probably already other guides that do it way better than I can explain it. Um, well, all I know is just you just wait here. There's plenty of time. Um, just hang out here until everything goes off. Come back into the middle and just beat the boss. And when you get them down to 19%, you push the phase, and you're all good to go. Uh, looks like another tank buster. A couple of tank busters. Everyone should have three. Uh, three buffs on the thing but um, let's take a step back uh, through the phase to just just see if there's a different like setup <clears throat> so yeah so the girl does not have the the legs the dude has the shield but I think it's like close to the dude or it's mid dude on the uh, on the sticks AOE hits, and then you look at the next one, which I think it's like Dude and Close. Yeah, so Dude and Close, and we run to Dude and Close, and there it is. And now we look at A, and now at this point, I'm also looking at our debuffs um, to see who uh, who needs things. And I think I go stack with the monitors. Uh, no, I don't in this case. Oh, no, I do in this case. What do you know? Look at that. I'm being silly. You can see everybody sort of <laughs> scrounging around in that in that bit. Um, but uh, essentially, if we if we back it up here in a, in a minute, uh, it's the same it's the same setup for the first and the second one that I explained before. The person with the short will be opposite the, opposite um, the monitor side. So like if the if the monitor so, so the boss always faces A. The monitors can either be like the, the quote unquote left side of the stage or right side of the stage. Um, so short person's always there. The long person is always two ticks inward. And then you have um, a couple people here taking the short and then one person at A and then one person at C. But make sure you, you're not crossing the center stage to get hit with the monitors um, because that's what we're doing. So everything jumps. 
and then threes get the tethers and then you just you just set up the same exact way and you kind of have to scramble around um and you can see me i tried to go for c and we called out like oh you got to go for c and and this is me like standing here with the short um the short spot so we go here we go here and then we're back into the boss and hit the thing um let's look at another example So in here, like, Venom marked us, so I'm not actually going onto the monitor side this time, I'm actually going to a far. So, um, you can see me, I thought I had short, but then I went to the far and I, I got into my position. Um, that's the far, it hits, everything works, and then, um, <clears throat> yeah, like, like, you can go sort of anywhere, like, once you're done with your mechanics. So, I was near C, I took C. They took A, and as you can see here, this is another like setup pattern from a different angle. You can see the tether people have their tether thing, as you can see that the far people. So Brave's one right here is going to hit Vey, and then Vey's is going to hit me, and then um, uh, and then Usada, Usada is going to hit um, Zizas and Amons, and that's how it should um, that's how it should all play out. And there's plenty of time. Just don't panic. You'll 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 get there. Uh, once all that stuff goes off, there's a couple of tank busters that that hit the party, and um, and yeah, usually every everybody's like all over the place. So like wherever the ad is facing, like that's sort of like the new north that we use. But essentially, um, once you hit like 20, 19 percent, like during this cast bar, you've already pushed the phase. So at this point, you can see. I've already built up like gauge and I've already built up my procs, but this is where you just keep building up and like prepare for the last phase. Also really important, uh, face your camera north at that point or else like, or else the, um, uh, how should it, how should it be? Oh yeah, and Pally does a little like loop de swoop into the middle um, right before the phase transition hits. Um, it actually helps, helps like if you have that ability, it also helps like just hitting the boss immediately instead of having to like, you know, like jump in real quick. And then Alpha, and then they do a little nudge, and then they and then here's our master boss, right? So you can see Pally in the middle there, and he just like he just goes to town, he just keeps hitting him. Um <clears throat> one of the things is, is that this last phase, I think it's four minutes thirty no wait, it's we use our two minutes three times, then it's a six minute phase, is it? Um I don't know, but you can you use your two you use your two minutes three times during this fight, once at the very beginning here, once in the middle, and then um, during her enrage sequence. Uh, you can pot uh, anywhere in between. Um, me personally, my pot, as you can see, it's not up right now, so I save it for the second two minutes. Um, but everybody's different. Uh, do what's most comfortable for you, and um, you know, and you can also wait until the very end to to pot too. But there's a couple of different like weird timing. Um, this phase, uh, just like every other phase, it's no joke. You can see our mitigation list, uh, down here. Your party's gonna have to do your mitigation list. You're gonna have to do everything at, like, no joke. It's really, like, th th the mechanics in this phase is not really that difficult to understand, but it's more just the execution and the healing, um, that just is involved with it. And, and that's the most important thing, um. The mitigation cooldowns and like you're, you're just like everything. You're gonna have to use everything, even personal healing and and all that stuff. So, um, but here we go. It's, it's the last phase. Um, anyway, the um, everybody pops for two minutes. The party needs to be about uh, in the middle. Uh, obviously, there's a tank LB that and that happens right there. And I think, I think you guys as a group, if you're at this phase, then, you know, you don't need me to explain sort of like all the difficulty, um, in that. But, but what I look at is that, you know, the party is sort of middle. You have one tank that's like, you have one tank that's closer than the party. You have one tank that's further away from the party. And those are the, you know, and those are the, and that's how that tank buster works. There's two different, uh, patterns here. There's out, out. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I got my thing. Well, the way that we call it is we go out, out, in, side, in, which is like the the fastest movement, and then we have in, in, out, out, side, in. 
and it'll take you a little bit to get used to it, but, you know, we had practice, um, by practicing just this phase alone in some other programs that I'm not allowed to talk to you about. But it's been three hours now, nobody's gonna listen to this. So there you go. Out, in, sides, in, and then I pop my mitigation, and then, um, uh, the tanks do their thing, uh, and the dragoon has, dragoon thing hits the party. Um, and as you can see, <clears throat> we have the one tank that's, uh, closer than everybody, and then we have Vey who's further away. Two tank busters, there we go. We all stack in the middle. Now we look for exaflares, because why not? They always love exaflares. Um, one of the things I do here is that I, I turn my camera, uh, well, not in this case, but I turn my camera towards this, the towards the direction I'm going to be running to into. So it's one, two, three, four, there's six of these AOEs. Five, six, and then we go to our clock positions. And um, for this instance, my clock position is south because I'm the range DPS. Uh, there's a little bit of a different um, clock positions than our normal spots here. Uh, and that's because of the limit break that happens uh, a little bit later that I do. Um, so uh, the party gets the party. Four people get hit, then another four people get hit, then the party stacks and they all get a big, um, big hit. And this uh, this mechanic is just like um, just like a lot of other ones. Thordin, uh, T6, uh, where um, where the tanks will have where where the tanks will have to be up front and um, and and take the hit, uh, and the party will be uh, behind them, <clears throat> and then the tanks will go out and get their uh, get their uh, you know hits again. Um, at this moment, uh, we go to in, into our quadrants, and this is really important for this dodge. Like this is also out, out, in, side, in, which is also the fast movement. So we wait, in, and then side. And at this point, um, this is when the beam will hit four people. So you have, you can't be too fast. You can't be too slow. You just have to let the AOEs dictate your movement. So don't go too far in. See one beam right here. And then second beam, wait for the second beam, and then everybody goes and they they go and they stack at C. Super hard hitting, super need super hard mitigation. But one of the things that always tricked us up with that phase was moving in too quickly, or or dodging or dodging stuff that isn't um, you know that didn't what you call it. Not dodging stuff, but just 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 moving in a bit too quickly, or like not waiting for the second ones to go off. Uh, that that got it. That got us on a few runs. Um, <clears throat> we look at the exaflares. It's happening at four, and we go clockwise. So that's how we call it out. We go four clockwise. And we go in, dodge, dodgy dodge. This is the dragoon dives. So this is five. This is six. And then at this point, the party kind of stays like where it is. They kind of stay out, and then the two tanks will go in. They'll take the dragon. They'll take the dragoon dives. Um, one, two, three, right there. Uh, that's the the first LB. Um, and also too, like the the re the as you know. Um, um, let me see here. Yeah, so there's an LB rotation, and I don't exactly know it, um, but I know that like every party member has to hit an LB, and I think other guides have done done that as well. Um, I'm just gonna reiterate sort of my spot, and my my like part on the A AOE. So so we have um, <clears throat> so we have the Reaper AOE, we have Pally, uh, we have the Reaper LB, we have Pally uh, LB, we all stack in the middle. This is where um, meteors appear, and this is where we all run to our clock spots. I run to C. Um, then we have uh, Brave hit his uh, um, meteor, or Brave hits. Oh, and at this point, these meteors ignore the meteors. Do not DPS them; they will die with the limit breaks. So Brave's AOE hits. It destroys all the little meteors. And then I hit my LB, and now here's the thing where the party has to... Now these, 
these flares are actually like, you have to do these flares correctly or else you're gonna get wrecked. Um, and this is where you need to pop all of your personal uh, healing buffs as well if you have them, because everybody is just really low on all kinds of mitigation and you know, it, you, you got to use everything, everything in, in your wheelhouse as you can. <clears throat> so as soon as the LB goes off, I hit my LB. And depending if the, and this is where the party flexes. And luckily for me, I just don't do anything. I stay here. But the party needs to flex. If I have a flare on myself, the party needs to be at A. And the two people with the flares will need to go to D and B. I think, um, I think pretty far out, uh, maybe max melee distance, but also if the, um, <clears throat> if the, uh, if the flare is on three, uh, other party members other than me, then the rest of the party has to come and stack at C. So that's something that they, that you have to be aware of and have to flex for. And the reason why for the, the reason why is because I'm in the middle of my limit break to limit break the boss and the two meteors that are like the chunky meteors for North and South. And I can't, and I can't move, unfortunately. So that's the thing that happens. And then at this point, um, at this point, you know, you uh, it's it's a tank LB. And then um, a healer LB right after tank LB healer, tank LB. Like I think as soon as the cast bar starts, you can do the tank LB. The other tank will do the tank LB. Right, because um, uh, the the buff that you get from entering this phase will recharge the LB if you're the one that does it like at the correct time. Um, so everybody has to pop their LB at some point during this last part, and it's actually a really cool like, you know, hey, everybody's got to use their LB. Like you got, it's got to be on your hot bar. <laughs> it's got to be on your hot bar. Um, and there you go, we have the buff, and then your two minute two minutes come up here, and like don't be afraid if the boss seems like really high, like after you pop your two minutes, it really does it really does die pretty quickly. Um oof. Did I get everything off? Yeah, I did. Oh man, there we go. First clear, it was great. Um and and that's sort of that's sort of my long-winded three hour like walkthrough guide of this fight, which you know, honestly, it's well deserving of it because it was, um, it was, it was good. It was, it was fun. I, but at the same time, I think I struggled a lot with, um, understanding some of the mechanics and just wrapping my head around it because it, it really was, uh, it just, it, it's becoming more difficult. And, and the older I get, you know, um, like, I know I'm in my forties now. Ooh. So... It's, uh, you know, these fights will only get, like, more complex and more harder and, and all of that stuff. And, and you know, I really enjoyed it, but but what it really took, like, um, like to give you some statistics, I think we, uh, I think I used, like, 1,500 pots, like, 1,500 pots. Um, I probably used over 100 or 200 food. Maybe not that much, but, like, 150 food sounds about right. Um... We had, uh, we had uh, 1,800 pulls from, from the start. I mean, but most of those pulls, probably like five or 600 of them were actually the first phase just because those towers and tethers were, um, they were really, it's really tricky to get your head around. And that's why I spent like half the video like explaining those because like once you get through, once you get through like the first major mechanics and the, th and the third mechanics, everything just kind of like, everything flows a lot better. Um, and it's just like, you know, it's just getting your heads in and like, you know, just really knocking it out. Um, there are a couple of, I don't know, I, I don't know what else to kind of explain to you, except that, you know, I, I hope, I hope this, this was uh, long winded. Um, not, geez, what am I even saying? Uh, I hope that you guys like found this helpful and, uh, I know that. I know that it's long, and I know that, like, the YouTube algorithm just wants, you know, something that's short and sweet, and I know that the audience wants something short and sweet, but if you, may, if you made it to this part, I guess I'll, like, let you in on sort of, like, what my career is and what I actually do for a living. Um, I work for Sony Pictures. So there you go. 
I try to not talk about that in a lot of the um, a lot of the guides, and I want to keep the channel like completely separate. But you know, uh, I think for me, I I work uh, probably I don't know close to like 50 or 60 hours a week, and um, not only progressing through this fight and doing like all of the doing all of the different things. It is, uh, it, it's, it's hard. It's, it's one of those things where, like, we did three hours a night, um, five days a week minimum, and then on the weekends, I think we did six, I think we did at least, like, six or eight hours, um, to get the clear, but afterwards, like, you know, for, and we were worried that we weren't going to clear if we hadn't gone really hard on progressing through this fight, um, for the next, you know, until the next phase, but, you know, but essentially, like, yeah, work life is, is work life is great, um, and I spend a lot of time doing, uh, working on a lot of shows that you have seen on TV that I will probably reserve for another time because, and if you if you have listened to this, which is three hours, which I I don't think anyone's gonna listen this long, so I'm just gonna talk about whatever, but um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, like Sony working in Hollywood, um, doing that for the past like ten years, uh. It, it, it's been it's been really re rewarding but also really tough as well especially with uh, rating at you know such a high level um, but I like it you know I enjoy it it's my hobby um, and it's also my hobby to uh, share all the my knowledge with you um, even though probably some of it's like not really on point but um but that's another reason too like the easy peasy guides that I did before I didn't really expect them to blow up but I'm really so happy that the community, uh, the Final Fantasy community has really taken a liking to, uh, you know, just heal accordingly, or here's our party configurations and markers. But as, a, as somebody who's a, you know, creative and an artist and, and, and a firm, foremost an editor, I know that, like, this guide could be 20 minutes long, uh, you know, or, or, 40, or 40 minutes long, and, like, I could write a script and explain all of the things. But... I know how long it takes, and and if I were doing this full time, I'd probably have it. Yeah, like no problem. And I think a lot of the other creators that I watch, um, who are doing this full time, do have that time to make a really cool and polished guide. Um, but unfortunately, I um, uh, I wish I had more time. I wish there was more of me, but I don't. So I focus on um, I focus on sort of the career that is. Um, and that's really cool. That's working. That's working on. Um, yeah, it's working on some really great projects that I can't tell you because NDAs and like uh, I like my job. So there you go. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I hope that you know maybe you're listening to this on in the background, um, and maybe you're progressing on this fight, or maybe you're just curious on like you know my thoughts and just what it takes in order to clear this thing, but. I hope, uh, I hope that you guys get your clears and that you do well and that you have a good time and a fun time and you keep playing um, because that's, that's what it is. It's a whole bunch of fun. It's a lot of stress. Ah, oh, don't get me wrong. It's a lot of stress and a lot of mistakes and a lot of wipes, um, a lot of things. But man, there is no uh, comparison like, you know, to working on something so difficult and so hard. And finally getting the clear and that is my hope to you uh, that is that is it so until next time keep on adventuring